What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. And this is the truth behind Tupac making the song Dear Mama and Scarface's basically influence on this song. When Tupac set out to make a song for his mom, he had this idea from the very beginning when he did Brenda's Got a Baby. He had a tribute song that he was working on for his mom. But he didn't want it to be a B-side or somebody's, a song everybody skipped over. He wanted to be a song that's going to get radio appeal. So he didn't know how to formulate doing that. Because Brenda's Got a Baby was a popular song. But, you know, people in the streets weren't really playing Brenda's Got a Baby. He wanted something that was going to be on the radio. And he was upset that Brenda's Got a Baby didn't get any radio play. It, it was only the video that was getting a lot of the attention and the shine. But nothing else. So, problems ensued. Because his next album... He was like, look, I'm going for the streets so I can get some radio play. But when he had Keep Your Head Up, do -do 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 do do And he was like, man, that's the beat I should have used. But that was the format. When I came out with Keep Your Head Up and I, you know, and I get around and all that stuff. That was at the time when he got the, uh, with the underground and, he, you know, because they had Kiss Me Back. When Al Pac's album was out, he's listening to Digital Underground's album, and he's seeing how they getting all these spins and radio play, and he's like, "Man, if I had a radio song, like I can get up there." So that's what made him make "Keep Your Head Up" and I get around and all these songs. So he's starting to think about, okay, this is how I need. I could do the song for the for the brothers in the streets, then I could do some songs for the girls too and the ladies. So it's not always hard. But even if I'm talking to the brothers, they going to feel me. That was his goal. So in 1992, um, they heard my mind's playing tricks on me from Ghetto Boys. And he he was with MC Breed. And they were supposed to do a show with, with uh, Ghetto Boys supposed to be on one of the cars. And he was excited because he wanted to meet the Ghetto Boys. He wanted to get up like, man, them dudes is ill, man. He heard that album. And it, he loved We Can't Be Stopped. He just thought that was the rawest thing ever. Because they they had to fight censorship, everybody. But when the success of my mind playing tricks on me, the people that wouldn't press their records looked like idiots. So now people had to run back and press the records. And they did that with basically no radio play, nothing. Until my mind playing tricks came out, they couldn't get airplay. So they came literally for nothing. Pac respected that movement. And well, he was gravitated to the group Ghetto Boys. So when Scarface came out with Let Me Roll and all this stuff, on the um, Me Against the World, uh, Face to Face, when he had that album, uh, Scarface had a song on there called Now You Feel Me. And when Now You Feel Me came on, that was it. Pac sat back, listened to Now You Feel Me. 1993, he heard Now You Feel Me by Scarface. And said, that's it. I know how I'm going to do my song. He freestyled just talking about his mama while that song was playing. He played Now I Feel You so many times and said that's the realest song they've ever did. Scarface. That made him fall in love with Scarface right there once he heard Now I Feel You. He said, you see how he just grabs you? He said, that song grab you. You could relate to it. He was freestyling Dear Mama to that song without writing anything down at this point. Just to get the thoughts out, to see how it was going to that beat. If you listen to 
Dear Mama, and listen to Now I Feel You. You could almost take the song and put it on the same beat and it has the same tempo and rhythm. So Pac was thinking about, you know, making his record. He was working on it. He's working on a lot of projects at the time. He's working on his project, Thug Life. Um, he had a whole big movement was going on. Then he had this case. He got arrested. He was just being harassed completely by the police department. So he got out. That's when you saw him in New York. He got arrested. He spit, did the, went home, did the joint. You know, uh, he did uh, out on bail at the same time. He's doing that. He's, he's writing for the album for me, which was, ended up being Me Against the World. He had already had like 30 some songs done <laughs> for his other album, which was Stug Style. Then he's got a Thug Life album coming out. Then he, he had to like make some songs, you know, retrospective to sell but he was pinning out that song Dear Mama period Dear Mama was basically gonna be on Thug Life album that's a, <laughs> shoot it was something else so of course he's he's sitting down and writing Dear Mama sitting down in the bathroom writing rhymes and most of his rhymes he wrote in a privacy of his own, he'll go in a room and just by himself where he can have space and then he'll let people hear it as he rapping. You know, he'll come out and rap some of it and he'll be like, oh, it's coming along. I like that. So, that's basically how the song was made. That's what makes, people don't understand is that's what you're supposed to do as an artist. You're not supposed to stay stagnant. You're supposed to grow. All music change. Jazz change. You're not supposed to do it exactly like someone else do it. You can use it as motivation. You can use it as creative art, you know, art art to just basically as an extension of yourself. You know, and that's what it's for. It can give you ideas to create something of your own. Somebody listen to a song from 1980 and be like, man, let me try to do this. Like Bruno Mars, he listened to a song back in the 80s, like a, a pop rock song. Rock changed. Rock didn't used to be that way. It became pop rock, rock and roll, soft rock, classic rock. Rock changed. Metal changed. All forms of music has changed. R&B has changed. They're not staying stagnant and doing the same different thing over and over. So eventually, rap is going to have to evolve into something else. You can't consistently do the same thing over and over and over. And that's why people are getting so tired of it because it's not evolving anymore. It's just staying stagnant with people doing less, 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 and less. And it's looking lethargic. Now, I'm all for somebody making a new song, using a new style, and they're adding something to the culture or adding something to the art. I don't want to see somebody emulate the next man to the T and no creativity to it whatsoever. So it's almost plagiarism. That would be a crime. And see, that's what made Tupac such a genius is that he could listen to the old soul sounds. He could listen to a rock song. He could write to anything and make it work. So, Tupac's spirit as far as how he rhymes and how he work with people and how he work as far as his work ethic, people didn't understand him. Because you just saw an uh, uh, image of Pac. You saw him, you think Pac just kick it, party, 24 hours a day, not getting anything done. When he came out of prison, it changed him. He didn't want to waste any more time. 
He wanted to work. He wanted to build something. Because he didn't want to go back to jail. Period. He was just sick of that. He grew out of a lot of things. But then he got sucked into another type of life. Which kind of pulled him away. From what he was originally supposed to be working on. But we're drifting off into a whole nother thing that I was going to say for later. So I'm out.